First of all, on behalf of Senator Bob Clegg, I submitted his written testimony uh, as the president of Program New Hampshire. Most of you know me here as the legislative director of the Women's Defense League. I do not appear here today as that. I appear here as myself. I appear as someone who might someday find themselves in need of a protective order if and when I become a vulnerable adult. House Bill 696 says that the purpose of this chapter is to enable vulnerable adults to seek permanent and temporary relief from abuse, exploitation, and neglect. However, I'm giving you a, it makes its way around a 21-page uh, comparison of a couple of existing statutes with this bill, and I'm going to reference them in my testimony. <coughs> One of which, NSR, uh, NH, uh, RSA 161F42, says it is, quote, to provide protection for vulnerable adults who are abused, neglected, or exploited. RSA 631-91 says, quote, whoever commits any of the following acts against an elderly, disabled, or impaired adult, as defined in 631A, shall be guilty of financial exploitation and penalized. Finally, RSA 131B3, which is the statute, part of the statute this is seeking to amend, says any person may seek relief pursuant to 173B5 by filing a petition to the county or district where the plaintiff uh, or defendant resides, alleging abuse by the defendant. And if you look at these statutory provisions side by side, if you were to consider adding issues such as emotional abuse of a vulnerable adult, physical abuse of a vulnerable adult, sexual abuse of a vulnerable adult, exploitation of a vulnerable adult's person or property, neglect of a vulnerable adult, 173B seems practically ready-made to come to my or any other vulnerable adult's rescue. The temporary and permanent relief provisions in 696 are taken from 173B. However, a reading of 173B actually provides aid, comfort, and recourse to victims as compared to 696, which seems solely bent on punishing the perpetrators and relieving them of their property. Enacting new laws for the sake of enacting new law instead of building on known foundations, leave citizens like me frantically searching among the NHRSAs, trying to understand how and where someone in my circumstances might find themselves and where we might find recourse. For these reasons, I urge the committee to find 696, despite what some might believe to be good intentions, an expedient to legislate. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so what you're telling us is that there's already laws on the books that could be tweaked to maybe in, in, include a couple of extra uh, conditions. And, you know, putting this one on the books would really cause confusion. Well, for, thank you for the question. Um, the definitions that are used to describe a vulnerable adult in 696 are lifted directly from 161F. Uh, other parts of 696 are taken from 633. The temporary and permanent relief aspects of 696 are taken from 173B, which already exists. So it seems, how do you, how do you join these together? If the intention is good, to give vulnerable adults the opportunity to seek a protective order, then let's do that. Let's either strengthen 161, which is elderly and adult services, protective services to adults, or uh, 
use the penalties that are in 631 assault and related offenses and join them together. This doesn't make sense. It's much like 687, you don't know where to go to find recourse. Thank you. Crook TV.